Hey friends, do you keep waking up to a low blood sugar, that honking of your Dexcom alert? Do you keep waking up in the morning with a headache because you've just been running low all night? Well, I may have the solution for you and it's actually the number one mistake I see endocrinologists making when they are managing the insulin regimen in people with diabetes. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what that is and how we can identify it and um, some talking points for you and your healthcare provider so that we can fix it and you can get better sleep and have better management over your blood sugars. Diabetes go from feeling overwhelmed to feeling empowered and confident when it comes to managing their diabetes. In today's video, we're talking about the number one mistake that I see endocrinologists making when they are helping someone with diabetes with their insulin dosing. This is called over basalization and I see it all the time and it drives me nuts. So over basalization is when someone increases their basal rate too much and it becomes too aggressive. And typically this results in overnight or fasted below target blood sugars is usually when we, we see that sort of thing. So a basal insulin can be given using long acting insulin like Lantus or Tugeo, Traceva, Levomir, those sorts of insulins. And can also be given with an intermediate acting insulin twice a day, such as Novolin N or Humulin N aka NPH. It can also be done using the basal profiles in an insulin pump. The purpose of a basal insulin is to keep your blood sugar steady during a fasted state. That is the key word, my friends, fasted state. Basal insulins are not supposed to correct your blood sugars after meals or any anything along those lines. It's literally there to keep your blood sugar steady while you don't have any carbohydrates on board or any bolus insulin from a meal on board. Typically, someone's basal insulin should be about 0.5 units per kilogram. So for myself, I weigh 148 pounds. If we divide that by 2.2, it'll give us kilograms. So 148 divided by 2.2 is 67. Ish. So 67 kilograms is how much I weigh in kilograms. And it's saying that my basal insulin, if I multiply that by 0.5, I likely <laughs> should be taking about 33 units of basal insulin. This definitely varies from person to person, depending on your insulin resistance. I actually take a insulin sensitizer called metformin. So I am pretty, pretty sensitive to my insulin now and I actually don't take 33 units of basal insulin, but it's a good baseline. And ideally that should be maybe the max amount that I take. So if you find that your basal insulin dose is significantly more than that recommended dose, that's a red flag um, in the sense that, okay, maybe I need to look into this and make sure that I am not over basalized. Again, it doesn't mean anything is wrong if yours is a little bit higher than that recommended dose, but it means there is something that we could maybe look at and, and adjust possibly. Another thing that should kind of give you pause for a moment is the bedtime and morning differential. So this means you take your bedtime blood sugar reading and you subtract it from your morning blood sugar reading. Say I went to bed at 200 and I woke up at 150. So my bedtime morning differential would be 50 milligrams per deciliter. So that means that I dropped 50 milligrams per deciliter overnight. And that is because of my basal profile or my basal insulin, because I'm not, ideally, hopefully you're not waking up and, and taking short acting insulin without realizing it. Fasting like overnight is the best time to tell if your basal rate is in a good spot or if it's maybe not really where it should be. 
This could be the opposite as well. Maybe you go to bed at 200 and you wake up at 300. <laughs> then we know maybe our basal rate, um, especially if we you know, didn't eat pizza or something the night before, we, we had a fairly chill night, <laughs> then that's pretty indicative that our basal rate is actually too low. My rule of thumb is if your bedtime and morning differential drops or raises 30 or more milligrams per deciliter, this again should have that little alert go off in your head and you should be like, okay, let me, let me take a look at a couple more of these. And if it is consistently like that, then that's a good indicator that your basal rate is off. I see a lot of people adjusting their basal rate insulin dose based off of just their fasting blood sugar. And that's okay. This is usually how we're instructed to do it. But the problem with that is it really doesn't tell us how much we're dropping overnight. A really good example of this is I had a client that I was working with and they came in and they were really frustrated because their fasting blood sugar was not where they wanted it to be. It was like in the 150s. They had been increasing their basal rate with the instruction of their endocrinologist and still were not hitting the target that they wanted to consistently. Instead of advising to the endocrinologist, hey, I think we should keep increasing this insulin, what I did instead is I said, what are you typically, are you having like a bedtime snack or anything like that? How are you sleeping? You know, assessing what's going on before we go to bed. And sure enough, this person was having saltine crackers before bed. Um, it was something they wanted to have as a snack. And this shot their blood sugar up into the like 300s prior to sleeping. And so I said to them, oh, okay, are you, I think maybe this is causing some, uh, a pretty significant spike. Would you be okay uh, trying a different snack? Like uh, maybe a couple of crackers with some peanut butter to help keep you steady or uh, like a cheese stick or something. And they were like, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I didn't realize that the saltine crackers were doing that. So I then went to the endocrinologist and I said, this person is dropping, right? So they were in the 300s and we're going down to 150. And I said, this person is dropping significantly because of their basal insulin. We need to adjust it because this client has told me that they'd like to try having a different kind of snack to help keep their blood sugar steady overnight. And the endocrinologist kind of brushed me off and they said, no, the fasting blood sugar is still too above target. Sure enough, <laughs> my client stopped eating saltine crackers and started having a little bit higher of a protein snack before bed and they were crashing again because that basal insulin was far too much. So moral of the story is yes, absolutely. We got to look at that fasting blood sugar, but we also have to look at what's going on at night and what our blood sugar is before bed. And you know, maybe what are, what are some of our habits before going to bed and try to make adjustments to those first before we continue to increase the basal insulin. Another reason you will see providers and people with diabetes increase their basal insulin, maybe a little bit prematurely is because their after meal blood sugars are not in target range. Sometimes, yes, maybe your basal insulin is not where it should be during the day. It's a little harder to tell since there's food and stress and all kinds of crazy stuff going on. But most of the time, the, this has to do more, of course, with your insulin to carb ratio or the types of foods you're eating and, and how you're eating them and how you're pairing them up and all of that good stuff. If you feel pretty good about your basal insulin, like your bedtime to morning differential is within target range and you're feeling good about that, but you're still having postprandial spikes, that is definitely a different kind of issue entirely. I would not first look at my basal insulin in that case. If though you suspect it is your basal insulin, then you're gonna have to run a fasted test during the day, which I know is so fun, <laughs> so fun fasting. Um, but yeah, just like three or four hours of, of fasted um, basal testing can be helpful to just make sure that your basal rate during the day is okay. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of stuff about Rachel, what about Dawn phenomenon and all that 
crazy hormone fluctuation that I'm always getting. Shouldn't I be increasing my basal rate for that? Yes, absolutely. That still counts as a fasted state. Basal insulin is supposed to keep you steady while you're fasted. If you are fasted and your progesterone is spiking due to your menstrual cycle, or if your cortisol is spiking because it's you getting up in the morning, then you know, you're still fasted and it's totally okay if you're able to discuss with your provider about increasing your basal insulin at that specific time. This really only works well though if you have an insulin pump. For my MDI people, it's so much more likely that we see over basalization just because we really, we try to like increase that basal rate based off of just the dawn phenomenon itself. And then throughout the day, if you're sipping on Gatorade all day because you're afraid you're gonna go low, unfortunately we may have to try some other sorts of methods, whether that's adding some sort of medication to help help with that dawn phenomenon like metformin or maybe a GLP-1. Or if you don't wanna use an insulin pump as a person with type one diabetes, another thing you can discuss with your provider is adding NPH, which is an intermediate acting insulin on top of that long acting insulin. So if you need that extra boost in the morning because of dawn phenomenon, or you need an extra boost during your period, but you don't wanna completely change your basal insulin, then that can be helpful to have a little bit of an increase over a 12 hour period, as opposed to 24 plus hours that you usually see with a traditional long acting insulin. To summarize, the number one mistake that I see endocrinologists make when managing the insulin regimen of people with diabetes is over basalization. This is something that happens when we are increasing the basal rate solely based off of fasting blood sugar or postprandial blood sugars instead of assessing maybe some lifestyle changes we can make or additional medications that we could use in place of increasing that basal insulin. Two ways you can tell if you are over basalized are first by assessing your morning to bedtime differential. And if there is a rise or a drop of 30 milligrams per deciliter or more, then that is a good thing to bring to your provider's attention. Another way to assess if you might be a bit over basalized is if your total basal dose is greater than 0.5 units per kilogram of body weight. I will also link a resource that I have for testing basal rates and documenting its little Excel sheet and I'll have that link in the description box for you as a resource. If you have any other questions or thoughts on this, please let me know in the comments below. I am really curious to hear as to whether this has happened to you or is it something you've ever thought about? Let me know and I will see you in the next video.